Hello, and welcome to another edition of a CMG music production uh, tutorials and what we're going to be looking at today is a little bit of theory and how we can apply that to make your pads, your risers, uh, your arpeggiations and well, basically all of your compositions sound pretty epic. Uh, so we're going to be looking at this concept of voice leading which is when you get a nice sequence of chords and you take the most minimal of steps um, to change to the next chord. This is the kind of thing that the great classical composers, Bach, Beethoven, Brahms, Chopin, all these kind of guys, they knew what they were doing, they knew the story. And all that knowledge got lost uh, during the kind of rise of uh, Nazism in Europe, uh, when all of the European composers got exiled to America and they lost all of their knowledge and then it got amalgamated into blues music and then it became jazz but that history lesson is for another day because now we're going to be looking at what's in front of us on the screen so this little grid here this little chart is going to be your cheat sheet to voice leading you don't particularly have to understand music theory and you know what nobody really does it's kind of like lifting the veil you reveal a little bit more of it every day as long as you keep looking at it so on the left here, we've got this column of the chords. We've got C minus seven, that's C minor seven. We've got F seven. Whenever you see a letter and a seven beside it, it's called a dominant seven chord. And we've got B flat major seven. And we've got another dominant, we've got G dominant seven. And this is a lovely little sequence. Um, another name for it would be a two, five, one. And this little chord here would be a flat two diminished chord, or it would be a five seven in another key. Um, but we're not going to get into that in too much detail. It's called a two five one. You can Google it. It's a big classical thing. It's a big jazz thing. But to call it classical and jazz um, is a misnomer, really, because it basically is music. It is the engine of music. So whenever we look at a chord, we ha always have a root, a third, and a fifth. That's a basic little triad chord. And then when we add a seventh on, that's when things start getting really juicy. So these are all the notes of the chords in C minor seven. We've got C, we've got E, and the little B here beside it means flat. That's gonna be a black key on your keyboard or your logic piano rule, for those of you who don't know. And then we've got G and we've got B flat. And then in F dominant seven, we have F, A, C, E flat, and so on. So. Let's just get straight into logic here. Uh, this is one I cooked up earlier, but I'm actually just going to get rid of it all because it was awful. And I'm going to start again. So we're going to start with alchemy. and going to open up alchemy. And shock horror, I am going to use a preset just so I can put down the, the sounds. So I kind of want something, you know, piano-y or, or struck something like that something that sounds kind of clean and uh, what about this organ we'll try that not that it has to be an organ just so you're, you're laying down the notes um, I always say you know try to have the vision of what you're going to do first and then do it it's cool kind of getting the sounds and um, but if you try and learn music or you try and play music solely by ear you're you're probably going to end up missing something. It would be like trying to break the password of a bank, but you didn't have any vials or you didn't have any numbers or you were trying to read a book and you didn't know how to read consonants. What are you going to do? You know, you can sit and figure it out. And every time you open the book, every time you try and crack a new password or whatever, you're going to be refiguring it out every time you're going to be reinventing the wheel. Nobody needs to reinvent the wheel. When you bring a car to a mechanic, he doesn't reinvent the engine. He works with the engine that was already built. Whenever a car company builds a new car, they use the same concept of an engine and they, maybe they elaborate on it. So if you learn theory, you'll really see under the bonnet of music. So if you go back to my little preview page, I'm going to put down C, E flat, G and B flat in order. So how about I go to the C here? C, E flat, G, B flat. And the next bar, next beat, F, A, C, E flat. 
and in the next one, uh, it was B flat, D, F, A, and then G, B, D, F. Let's get something that sounds a little, a little more clean. Oh, gentle sign, gentle sign bells. Let's take off the delay though. Okay, that sounds, in music ter or terminology, that sounds very rooty, uh, because the root is on the bottom. And if the root's always on the bottom, you're gonna, you're not gonna see the light at the end of the tunnel. It does sound nice, it sounds very Nintendo to me, it sounds very Game Boy. So let's get our little preview open here, my little page. So with this concept of voice leading, um, what we want to do is keep what we can keep and change what has to change. So we can see in this first line here, we've got this C and we've got E flat for the C minor 7 chord. And in F dominant 7, well we also have a C and an E flat. So we wouldn't want to change those, we don't have to change those uh, and the ones that would change with the G would be go down to, or would go down to F and the B flat would go down to A and that would be the minimal movement that we could make <coughs> so the C would stay and the E flat would also stay and when we do that, the A flat or A sharp here as they call it, it's B flat really would go down to A and the G would go down to F. And it gives us a very nice close kind of tender sound. So we can refer back here. Um, if we're in F, we've got F and A. And look, well, you know, the same thing again. The C goes down to B flat. The E flat goes down to D. It's got a pattern to it, right? Except this last one, but we'll get to that in a wee second. So. So we've got C, E flat, F. So there's F. It's going to stay. The A is going to stay. I kind of have two options here. We could put the B flat on top. Or we could put the B flat on the bottom. Here it is on the bottom. Here it is on top. I kind of like the idea of the bass note being on the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. And it's going to facilitate the next chord a lot better. So we'll go back to our little chart and we've got G, B, D, F. So we can see that the D and the F are going to stay and the other two are going to change, okay? So we've got D and F. Oh, oops. There's the D. So I'm going to take the F off the top and put it here and the D off the top and put it here. So then we've got this B, B note. If we have a B flat and then we have just a B, we call that B natural. So I'm going to put the B natural right here. Uh -huh. So, I don't like repeating myself too much, um, except in conversation. <laughs> uh, ask any of the girls I chat to, terrible. Um, not that there's that many, not that there's any. Oh my God, there's none. I need to reevaluate my life right now. So, I want to just do a little bit of variation here. Um, so, we're going to go back to our C chord. I can take this B flat. And I can put it on the bottom now, look. Because in this chord, we had C and E flat. They're going to stay. So, then G goes down to F and B flat goes down to A, right? So we can keep the C 
and E flat, C and E flat. So I'm not going to go back to the little cheat sheet now because uh, you should really go and learn it. So the next chord I want is B flat major 7. I can keep the A right here because it's going to conform pretty well. Um, we've got a B flat right on top. That's going to sound weird to some ears together. But it's going to sound really good when I break this up. So we'll have B flat, D, F. And then the next chord, A, is going to go down to G. B flat, well, it's pretty close to the B note that we had. And then the other two stay. So let's copy over. And you can copy this note for note if you like. Because you're not exactly stealing. The way I see it is this is all being done. This is music theory. And we don't write the music. We arrange the music. Um, certainly there were contemporary composers who broke this these rules of tonality and voice leading. Like Schoenberg and Mahler and people like this. Um, I'm not getting into that in too much detail, uh, but those guys were absolute lunatics and created some really special music, but we're talking about tonality. Most people enjoy tonality, and it's only serious nerds like me are into things like Schoenberg, so the B flat, or the B natural, wants to go down to the B flat and C, so we got G, we got B flat, and we got E flat. C here, so there's C, E flat, G, B flat, okay? The next chord is F, so the B flat there would really want to go down to A, the G can go down to F, and then we've got C, and then this E flat, we've got F, A, C, E flat doesn't have to change, okay? So then we've got F on the bottom, and that exists in B flat, so we've got B flat, um, major seven, so we've got A, we've got the B flat again, get rid of that, and then we've got D on top. And then the F exists in the G seven chord, so we can still keep F. And then we've got G, we've got B, can keep the D on top, okay? So we've got it's, it's, everything's kind of climbing down here, okay? So F, we're in C major or C minor seven chord. So F goes down to E flat. You can keep referring back to the chart, refer back to the chart as many times as you like. I have to refer back to the chart a hundred thousand times in my life before I finally understood this stuff. But now I know it like the back of my hand. So we got E flat, the G here can stay. The next note up would be B flat. And then we got the C on top. Okay. Uh, D flat can stay on the bottom for F, the F chord. So we got D flat. G can go down to F, oops, G can go down to F, B flat can go down to A, and the C can stay on top. So then in this chord, the E flat goes down to D, the F can stay, the A can stay. flat on top, so we've got B flat, D, F, A, and then the D can stay on the bottom, here's the D, look, it can stay on the bottom, the 
F can move. So we got G, B, D, F. Now, this is as far as I'm going to go. So I'm kind of hearing some kind of dancey trance thing in my head. So obviously 70s is a little slow. We'll be talking about one, two, five, something like that. And then one, two, five is a little quick for some of those changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double the time here. So if we got to the end of the fifth bar, it's four bars, one, two, three, four. And then when we hit five, it's really the end of the fourth bar. So we want to go to the end of the eighth bar. To double it so we're going to select it we're going to hold alt we're going to drag and that's going to double the length of everything we're going to go into the region we're going to hit command and a we're going to drag and we are going to go to uh, some sort of arpeggiated thing i don't really like using um too many presets but i just want you to hear this kind of thing sound good right now. The first one actually sounded pretty good, but which one was it? So the ARP is putting some of them slightly out of tune. Uh, so anything that isn't a plus or minus 12, you would want to correct because it's going to make it sound well, pretty bad. And anything that's not a multiple of 12, you might want to correct as well. So then that's going to keep it within the keys that we were writing. And then I'm going to change the voices to four and always as our mode. So we're not getting this legato glide thing. around with a couple of things here to make it sound a little better. Right. So things are sounding a little close, so here's what I like to do. I can take all of the top ones, just click and drag, spread them out a bit. That was up two octaves. Take the top two again. Oops. difficulties with the mouse. Ooh. Okay, now we've got a nice spread. So you can kind of hear that. I'm not really worried too much about the sounds or anything right now. I just wanted to show you the concept of voice leading. Um, it also makes things like your strings. Uh, I think I had a, some good strings in here somewhere. Uh, gamelan strings. 
and make things like this sound really, really epic. Um, just make sure the tunings are okay. together and it's going to sound really good for choir if I can find where choirs are again uh, say so we have a meal oh why not That sounds pretty cool. So then if I was to uh, spread that out, a little bit of panning, don't care about direction mixers or any, or any real detailed panning, stuff like that, panning laws, don't care about that right now. Just showing you how to make some good sounds. Uh, if we get a, a female, uh, like a female O, male O, um, and then there's definitely a choir of kids here somewhere. Say like a a, a mixed O. Oh. Choir can be pretty good just for a different timbre. I actually made both of those the same as well. So we'll get the female, ooh, and then hopefully we'll have something a little different. So these ones will put up an octave or down an octave. Let's see. should really be down low, shouldn't it? Just for completeness, that last chord wants to come off. Let's slow this down just a little. I'm thinking if we got some strings over this side. And That lush multi layer too. Um. For 
the seek of completeness again. I should have done it all together. We'll do that. Uh, I'm gonna slow the tempo down just a little. It's gonna sound really, really pretty right now. Beautiful. And that's it for another edition of CMG Music Production. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you need any info any more information on voice leading or music theory, please get in touch uh, with the CMG Music Production Facebook page. Thank you. <laughs>